Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Now here, Paul says, there is no other foundation which should be laid other than Jesus Christ. You can highlight that in verse 11. Now he says, if any man builds on the foundation with gold or silver or precious stones or with wood or hay or straw, he says, each man's work will become evident for the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire. And the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. If any man's work which he has built on it remains after it's been tested by fire, this is, he will receive a reward. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Now this, this passage right here, verses 12 to 15, our dear friend Ron Miller, Flip's gone to see him in Thailand at the orphanage work there, Bon Emmanuel, and um, you can see it on our, on our website. You can even see the pictures with Flip over there visiting him and visiting the kids, teach them how to carve the stone and do stuff. They still do that, by the way, Flip, since you taught them. Yeah, I saw some pictures recent. That's so cool. So they, they it says, Ron, the fellow who started that, that work over there, he went, we met him in Arizona at our fellowship. He came in, he was a wealthy businessman, really successful. He was hired by Golden Corral Steakhouse. You know that all-you-can-eat buffet? Uh, <laughs> buffet. <laughs> Oh, buffet, yeah. The one that everyone pigs out at and puts food in their purse when they're done. And, you know, that was his biggest problem. He's in a retirement community. He said they would come and pay for one meal and leave with three. And uh, he, would, he was hired as by, by Golden Corral Steakhouse to turn around the worst uh, uh, restaurants in their chain, the ones that were losing all the money. And he actually would go in and... Um, he had a real gift at this. I mean, it's a tough thing to do to take a failing restaurant and, and get it turned around. And he was so good at it that they sent him to the worst one in the nation, which was in Cave Creek, Cave, Cave, Carefree, what was it? Down South, Apache Junction? No. Man, it was way out there in the boonies. It was terrible. It was all retirement, and there was, like, tiny population, and they stuck him with this job. Do you remember what that, what that little town? We went, we used to... Little south of south of Phoenix, little town in the armpit Casa of Arizona, Grande. Casa Grande. That's it. And and I've been gone for 25 years. Don't hold it against me, okay? I don't remember all the names of the little towns, but Casa Grande. He 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 had to turn around the the Golden Corral Steakhouse there, and he started driving up to our little fellowship, Calvary Chapel, Tri City, and and he would ask me questions for hours about God. And I, you know, I had a passion for reading God's Word, so I was always reading the Bible. And, and we have this daily Bible reading schedule. So I just said, hey, you know, start reading this schedule. You just check off a couple chapters of New Testament a day, and, uh, or one, a, one of the New Testament each day, and, and a couple of the Old Testament. And after a year, you'll have read the whole Bible. And so he took one of the reading schedules and started doing it with me. And he, man, he, that guy was constant, like, hunger of questions. What about this? What about that? about this and and he he read this passage that each man's work whatever he builds is going to pass through the fire it's going to be tested by fire and when it's done being tested whatever whatever comes out the other side of the the kiln so to speak what that that's his treasure that he gets to keep so he fell asleep reading this passage and he had a really vivid vivid vision dream night some people call it on a, a dream or night vision, he, he saw his whole entire life's work, all those successes of turning around, all those restaurants, all of the money he had made, all of the fancy cars he had purchased, all the things he had. He saw this vision of them all going into this like conveyor belt furnace, like in one side. And it's going to go through, the fire is going to test it, you know, to to test everything he had done with his entire life. And so he said that it, everything passed into the one side and he went around the other side and out coming on the conveyor belt was just little piles of ash. And he started looking for what, 
what did it make? You know, what did his whole life produce? And, and he started taking his fingers and running them through the ashes. Like, there's got to be something of value for my life. And he, he literally, the, the conveyor was dropping, he said, onto the end of the floor. And there was a whole pile of ashes and nothing of substance. He's got his fingers digging through. And he's like, my life has made nothing. And this is when he turned his life. He said, Lord, I need to, to do something with my life. And he gave his notice at Golden Corral. And he, he gave away like so much of his wealth to everyone. And he took just like $2 in his pocket and went to Thailand and started the, uh, to, to, to help out with a, uh, well, the lady named Rose Martinez had Christian Happy Home. He went first to meet her. And then from there found out where the knee was great. And then he wound up going to Chiang Mai, is it called? Chiang Rai, and then, and then he wound up there, and he's been there for 25 years. And since he's been there, they've started from that orphanage, outreaches to other villages and other orphanages, and, and he says that he's pretty confident to today, looking back, that he can say that, you know, first it was like maybe we've touched 100 people, then 1,000 people, then today he's pretty sure it's up to about 10,000 people have come to Christ over the last 25 years from him laboring so take that and put that through the furnace he's like because because this is the passage that made him leave the corporate world because he realized i built nothing for the lord i built nothing that would last but if you lead a soul to christ you lead a soul to christ when it comes to being tested by fire what will happen do they get to go through will they pass through into eternity yes there's the value. See, this is where being, hopefully you can appraise this with your mind today. See the value of this. Investing in stuff is a waste. Investing in people, that's the only thing we take with us out of this life. If you have spiritual ears, you're, I see all these head nodding, yep, yep. Because the spiritual mind knows I can't take any physical stuff with me, but I can take the souls that I touch in Christ. So I'd rather touch a soul in Christ, even if I'm a pauper, when I leave this earth. I have no material wealth. I mean, how much did Jesus amass? They were fighting over his robe and his undergarment. Remember the, the, the soldiers? They didn't say, and we want your house, and we want all your stuff. And He didn't have stuff. If stuff was the goal of our Christian faith, I, I submit to you that in in Western Christianity, we've been duped with a very watered-down gospel that is very carnal and very not spiritual. And somebody forgot to preach 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Because this just happens to address that carnal issue. Just ancient times, but it's the same problem. Everybody was amassing stuff and worried about what, what house they had and what trinkets they had to decorate their house and all the stuff and they forgot about how, what's really important is people if you put more value on your stuff than you do on people you will turn into a miserable ogre by the end of your days and to be honest most people won't want to be around you because it becomes really apparent as time progresses the people who put value in other people even if they have very little in the way of material possessions I find that when I get to do their funerals, and it's an occupational thing, you know, when you're a pastor, you do a lot of, you get to be present at birth, you get to be present when they go. There's a lot of coming and going that a lot of people aren't aware of. But in my job, you get to see it on a daily basis. And in Ecclesiastes, it says that the living, the living take it to heart that, that this, this whole life, there's a bunch of vanity, emptiness. But the, the, the people who, who, you know, it says it, it's actually uh, uh, more blessed to go to a funeral than it is to go to a, a kegger, than a, a, a party. Because it says this is the end of every man. Every one of us is going to face leaving this earth. And if you don't take it to heart, you really don't figure out what's important. You don't figure out what's important with your relationships. You don't figure out what's important in keeping things in perspective. And so you, you, you wind up, the people who all they do is amass stuff. I hate, I hate to tell you this, but I've been at funerals where the people were the wealthiest, wealthiest individuals. 
and there's nobody there. And the kids who are there are only there because they just want to get it over with so they can divide the inheritance. And they usually have cursings to say about the person that departed. There's not no, but the person who had, I mean, I've been at funerals where they had such little, but they were always so giving and loving and investing in people. And that's, those funerals, they're packed. The, the, those funerals, they have touched so many lives. And, the, and I see, wow, what's a difference of value a life can make? How valuable, you know, think about how, how much difference has our life made in others' lives? When we go, are they going to go, wow, huh, glad he's gone, <laughs> jerk. <laughs> Give me his stuff, let's go. Or are they going to be weeping because of the, of the impact that you had and the love that you showed and invested in those people's lives? This is really, this is a word what I'm sharing today is really only for spiritual ears to hear. I know that carnal men will just think I'm stupid. You should have invested in stuff. You should have bought more stuff. Why? Could you take that stuff with you? Don't worry. Even a carnal man, it's funny, they have a blinder on. I can tell them that. I said, you, what, you plan on bringing a U-Haul to, to heaven? Or for your case, maybe not? Doesn't matter. You know, you never see the hearse pulling the U-Haul with all their stuff. to the. And if they bury their stuff with them, don't worry, grave robbers come and dig it up and take it away. Because they ain't taking it out of here. I mean, even those pharaohs that put it all in those tombs, later what somebody do? Come and grab the stuff. They rob it. Because the stuff didn't actually leave this earth with them, even though they had that silly deception. Wake up. I'm here to say, and this is spiritual words, to the person who's maybe carnally minded, wake up. Get a mind of Christ. You need to be born again in the spirit. Because this, what I'm sharing, will make your life of value. It'll make it where at the end of your days, people will be going, man, we're going to miss them. But only until we see them again in heaven. You know, it helps the perspective. And th these, things, these things, hopefully to you, will be like, you'll go, wow, I see a value in that. There is a value in living for Christ. There is a value in not making it the emphasis about stuff, making it about the people. The stuff is just there to help you take care of people. If you keep that mindset... Stuff can be used to help a lot of people. But if you don't, you're going to get, well, like he said, the, the fleshly guys were jealous, selfish. It's all about them. I guess my stuff, my stuff. That's not why you were gifted that stuff from God. You're gifted that stuff because he wants to bless you, but maybe he wants to bless you so that you could be a blessing. He never called you to be a dam for his for the blessings of his river that he's flowing into your life. He calls you to be a conduit for it to pass through. You know what happens when water gets dammed up, right? If you, if you seal off water, you only let water in, what will happen to the life in that, in that body of water? If it has no outlet, you know, you got it, he knows, he knows, he's worked with a lot with, it'll become stale and stagnant and start to stink. And you know, there are people that are just like that dam when it comes to everything that comes to them, it's mine, it's mine, I got it, it's mine. And then they wonder why no one wants to go around you. You stink. <laughs> you become stagnant. Nobody like, but the ones that are a conduit that the stuff comes to and it blesses others and it passes through. and it, it, You know, the cure to that stagnant water is actually punch a hole through the dam and let some, let some outlet go. And that brings life back to the body of water. It's the same thing in our lives. You weren't given all that stuff so you just hold it. You're given so that you could use it as a conduit to bless others. And you know what the funny thing is, is some of the most successful people pay guys like Anthony Robbins $10,000 to go listen to him at, at the Hilton up here so they can learn these things and, and they have these all-day seminars and, and he points out that the most successful people in the world do not hold on to all of the stuff that comes their way. The richest, richest, the top. They interviewed one of the pastors. I heard it on the on the radio. He he went over to Israel. He met with a Jewish, completed Jew. He's a, a a Jewish man that believes in Jesus as his Messiah. That's a completed Jew, and he's the fifth richest person in the world today. In the billions, it all owns real estate on the old Temple Mount. And so he was asking him, "What do you s attribute your success to?" And he said. Well, he quotes a verse from the Old Testament that is 
cast your, sow your seeds or, or your bread on the waters liberally. Like, put it out there. Everything that comes to you, you're given to spread out to others. So he gives and gives to so many different things. And yet he's giving and giving. He's trying to give away his wealth all the time and it just keeps increasing. Because what does the scripture say? Give and it will be what? Given to you. How much do you get given to you? It says good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. It will be measured to you. The, the, this is a spiritual principle, but not, natural ears cannot believe this. That if you give away things in the name of the Lord, when he shows you to, not, not, don't be foolish about it. Do it when he leads you to. This is a spiritual word. But when his spirit puts it on your heart, go help that person or go give them that. And you do it. What will happen to your life? You will get back. And I, I, I can tell you this from experience. You cannot outgive the Lord. You can, he's, he's impossible. You think, well, you, I feel like I'm supposed to give that person that. So you give it to him. And all of a sudden, someone comes and gives you two of them. I just gave away two of these, you know, one of these. Okay, well, I'll give away another one. Then two more come, and you're like, I got three. I only, I only need one. And the Lord's going, that's right. So why do you have the extra two? So you keep giving. And you get to learn the, the principle that we have a giving God who wants to teach us to not be stingy little children. Because you know how it is when you give some kids their candy. They, they ain't sharing with nobody. This is mine. And some of you are just like those stingy little kids when you get something <laughs> from God. But you know how as a parent when you see your child you bless them with something and they go and share it. I mean, I can tell you as an earthly father, I, I, that's the kid I want to give more to. How do you think our Heavenly Father feels when we are generous with what we have? Now, this is a spiritual word, so some will think I'm nuts. But the ones that get it, they're going to get a real blessing from this today. It's going to help them to let go of some stuff and, and loosen up some of that stale, stagnant water in their life and let blessings start to life to return. Sometimes giving is so freeing. Isn't it amazing that, that, you know, Anthony Robbins actually shared at his thing that giving made him feel like life was worth it. Not getting. He had lots, and he said, you know, it didn't really satisfy. But when he was able to give to someone and they needed it, like he started, he grew up in a, he had a very poor season with, with, in his life when his mom was struggling as a single mom, and someone brought them a turkey dinner at Thanksgiving time. And he has this thing where he, he literally works with all sorts of, of suppliers and everything and charities and puts on feed like, you know, 10,000 people Thanksgiving in this city and this city and this city now just to give back. But he says it feels so good. He goes, you can't believe the feeling, it, 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 the satisfaction that he gets. And people are thinking, you're nuts if they're not spiritual. They think he's cuckoo. He just gave away all that money. He's like, it is the best feeling in the world. It's better than the feeling of getting is that there's something gratifying to knowing your life is making a difference to help out someone else. And that whole pay it forward thing, you know, he, he's big on that. You know where he got it? I found out. He was, someone handed him a Bible and he started reading. He became a Christian recently. And he's just like, this is, this is the stuff I know but I didn't know it was a verse in the Bible. I'm like, see, godly truths are true anyway. Whether you learned it in the Bible or not, they're still true. Unto a generous man, the Lord does what? Repays. Is that only for the Christian generous man? Or is that for any generous man? It's any. Truth is truth. So we can appraise that. We can discern that and say, that's a good thing. Let's do that. Let's be this generous people that give and see what God does for us. And let's see life come back into our lives. I mean, the waters need to be teeming with life in our, in, in our lives, but they won't if we just dam up all the blessings. We've got to let them flow through. Now, next week we'll go into, Paul's going to talk about, don't you know that your body is a temple? What's it a temple for? The Holy Spirit. And we're going to study that in depth next week. But today, Serena gets to get baptized now into Christ. Now, when we baptize here, you guys already have heard me teach us, we baptize you into Jesus. 
We, we're joining you to Christ, like it says in Romans 6. Serena, this is your homework for later. You've got to read Romans 6, and you've got to find the verse that says, when you get baptized, it says, do you not know that all you that have been baptized into Christ, that you're baptized first into his death, and, and, and then into his what? Resurrection. So it's all about, Paul says, it's all about so that you can die to the old things that get buried and all the past, all the mistakes, they're done away with. So you can now re be resurrected to new life where you get to walk in the power with God now. You have Jesus with you and it's all about newness of life. Now you guys that know this, the just quick reminder in Romans 6, we got to live like this. We got to live where we go, hey, I joined myself to Jesus. I've died to the old ways. I've died to, to, the, to the temptations of the flesh, to the carnal things, so that I can now live a new life, alive to God. Resurrected life is what we're going to introduce Serena to this morning. It's a pretty cool thing. She gets, to, she gets to come to church, bury all the mistakes of the past out there in the water. We're going to, by the way, that's what we're doing. Is that okay with you, Serena? I can't see your face. Yes, please, she said. Okay, she's game. So, you know, we don't want to fool you. We're not joining you to our church. We're joining you to Jesus. Just what I taught about this morning. It's not about us. It's about him. But if I get you joined to him, that's where the power lies. That's where the power to transform our life comes, isn't it, guys? When we're, when we're joined to Jesus. And that's what we want to do for Serena this morning. So let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this lovely daughter of yours that wants to be baptized into Christ. And we just pray for her as we go out to the water's edge to see her united with your son. That you would meet her in those waters of baptism. You would help all of the hurts of the past, all of the scars, all of the pains. Lord, just to be buried in those waters like a watery grave. Lord, we're just going to put them down that we can pull her up anew to walk in that newness of life in your son. And we pray all these words, what we studied this morning, they would just percolate in our minds, in our spirit. They would bring refreshment and encouragement to our faith that we could become those true imitators of your son. And others would even be able to imitate us as we imitate him. And we ask that as we go from here to the water's edge. In Jesus' name. And everyone that agree with me said? Amen. Amen. Let's go on over to the water, guys, and see her join to Jesus. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.